You're listening to Biz Quick. This is where Julie and Corey provide quick and useful information to small business owners. Biz Quick is the podcast where small business owners get to showcase their businesses and receive expert advice and guidance in areas many entrepreneurs struggle with. And you, the listener, get solutions, tips, and tricks on real world topics that many small business owners face. Julie and Corey are the experts small businesses hire when they need solutions. And the BizQuick podcast is just one way they deliver those solutions. Let's start the show. Hi, welcome to BizQuick. I'm Julie. And I'm Corey. And on today's show, we have Lucas Liu. He's the co-founder and CEO of Infi.us, which is an AI-powered kiosk for quick service restaurants. He's located out of Chicago, Illinois, and he'll be joining us later. But first, Corey and I are going to talk a little bit about the human experience when working with businesses. And the technology integration into that. So, Julie, you know what I hate? People? Yes. (laughs) And that's why I love the technology side of things, being able to bypass that whole human element and kind of control how I interact with the business. So going on and ordering online, not having to talk to anybody, all of that's great. But it sucks when you get to a point you need to talk to the customer service or you do need a human and you have to punch through 18 different menus in order to get to the point where they might take your name and then you find out like it's an 18 hour wait in order to get a call back or what's best you get to the end and they give you the message of we are no longer accepting calls at this time and then just hangs up. Goodbye. Yeah. And you have to just start all over again. Uh, So there is a fine line between technology and humanity when it comes to customer service and business in general? There is. I would say, you know, that one of the benefits of having technology solutions available to replace or uh, supplement working with humans is that right now there's, there appears to be a shortage of the number of people that actually want to work. Yeah. And that was always, an issue even prior to the pandemic it, it not only a, a, a shortage of people who want to work a shortage of people who are qualified to work oh. because i remember back in uh, this was i don't know 2018 2017 2018 i was talking to a friend of mine who's in uh distribution uh restaurant uh, food distribution and she was talking about the restaurant owners who she uh serviced and they you know the unemployment rate was at four percent five percent somewhere in there And the problem that they were having was the only people who were available, who were unemployed, the only people who were available to be hired were the people who you don't want to hire. So basically like the the only people looking for jobs are the unemployables. Well, this, you know, we, this is such a, we have such differing views on what makes somebody unemployable that um, I, (sighs) I don't know. I hate this conversation. I really do. I don't, I, I don't hate the the concept of the conversation, but I, I, I hate the way that we consistently refer to people who we don't want to hire as unemployable or because that's not necessarily the case. And you know, my opinion is in many instances, if you can't find good workers, it's because you're a shitty leader. I would agree, but when every single person in that industry, every single business is having the exact same problem, I don't think it's because they're all shitty leaders. I think it's because there's an actual problem. Well, there there could be an actual problem, there, but there are a lot of ways to, there are a lot of different options for solutions to that, but that's, yeah. So it, that's almost like a trigger word for me, like the unemployables or the deplorables. Sometimes you yeah. refer to them as. And no, I don't want to reform, refer to them as deplorables. <laughs> they're, no, they're just unemployable. Trust me. You work in restaurants long enough and I'll show you who's unemployable and who's not. <laughs> um, but that's not the point of this conversation. The point of this conversation is solutions for issues like that. And that's where we're going to talk to Lucas today about is he's got a kiosk that essentially bypasses part of that human experience. And it's, it's the kiosk that you would see at a lot of quick service places. Uh, I think quick Panera service. has it. Panera has it. Uh, McDonald's has them. I know like it, it's, um, it, it's that kiosk. You go up, you, you punch in whatever your order is. It goes back to the kitchen and it, it eliminates the need for 
cashiers or as many cashiers as you would normally have. Um, and the thing that I really like about it is having worked in restaurants for so long is that if a mistake is made on the order, it's the customer's fault. So if they forget to put, I don't want this condiment on my sandwich or whatever it is, guess what? You fucked up, not me. <laughs> well, sure. But that also then assumes that the order is being made by a robot because there's still a chance that the person making the order messed it up. Sure. There's still a chance, but the, or the actual order being placed is not messed up. That's Correct. on the customer. That is 100% on the customer. It's an interesting concept. And I think, especially, you know, when you think about the COVID era, where there needs to be, for whatever reason, less and less human contact. I mean, really, depending on what you believe or, or what your, you know, your viewpoints are on COVID itself, there the less you have to interact with another human being, the better off you are. So this is a really great option for restaurant owners. And I'm, I'm sure it's probably not the first option that exists like this, obviously. No, no, it's definitely not. And I think there's, I mean, beyond that, like outside of restaurants, there's a lot of solutions. And I mean, I don't know, we were at, at Top Golf not too long ago. And as technologically advanced as that place is, the one thing that they don't have, which boggles my mind, you can't order from your table. You can't order from your bay. Like you have to wait for somebody to come by. And I have yet to go to a top golf where their service is top notch. Where like, I agree. If you need to order something, you have to wait and wait and wait. And the only person that can place your order is your server. Yeah. And you know what else is crazy? So the top, because the top golf that we were most recently at was the first one that I've been at in over a year where there was a, it's the first place I've been in over a year where there was a paper menu. Did you notice that? Yeah. And I thought, oh, this is so nice. I've missed this. See, I'm on the I'm on the other side. I like just scanning it, and you know, from a from a waste standpoint, and and all of that, and you know, you get the sticky menus, and you know, the the edges are frayed, and all of that. And being a business owner, you know, a restaurant owner, you don't want to throw that away because that costs seventy five cents, and that adds up over the year, you know, every time that you're throwing away a, and re-laminating a new menu. So I know I just don't have to dig my glasses out of my purse when there's a menu in front of me versus having to look at one on the screen of my phone. And I'm like, what is that? Yeah. What am I ordering? Expand and zoom in. <laughs> I still have to use my glasses yeah. on my phone, but I do, I agree with you that ordering from the table is a nice feature for, for places like um, Top We're, Golf. Yeah. Cause you're not going there for the the customer service experience you're going there to have fun with your friends to hit golf balls and you know eat and drink you're not yes. you're not sitting down at a table and and, and all of that so yeah i think there's certain area like certain places businesses where it makes sense to have that but then there's other ones where obviously if you go go to a nice sit down restaurant you know you don't want to a kiosk at your table on a white tablecloth. Right. You do <laughs> not. You do not. You're right. I really want to trash talk about who won at Top Golf, but I feel like that would backfire on me. So we're not going to do that. Yes. We should probably get going and uh, bring in Lucas and start that conversation. Yeah. I'll be interested to see what uh, his story is and what solutions he has to offer. Yeah, me too. So we uh, will be back with Lucas right after the break. Hey everyone, we wanted to tell you about our latest course, Foundation 52, that is now available through our website. This course is built to provide tools and techniques every week of the year, and it's designed to improve your small business. If you're thinking about starting a business, this is a great resource for you as well. We walk you through sales, customer service, disaster planning, growth strategies, and so much more. Head on over to sbpace.com to sign up today. All right, and welcome back to the show. We have Lucas Liu on. He is the co-founder and CEO of NFI. He's out of Chicago. Welcome, Lucas. Hi, good to see you guys. Good to see you too. Thanks for coming on the show. We're um, we're pretty excited to talk about your uh, software that you've created. The software and tech uh, hardware as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. the technology. Yeah. yeah. Thanks, thanks. My pleasure. Um, so you own a company and, and you create kiosks and you create the software for uh, especially quick service restaurants uh, to improve that customer experience on the ordering side, on the front end of things. Uh, can you tell us a little more about that? Yeah, sure. So uh, before I doing this uh, technology businesses, I was in the restaurant industry. I opened a restaurant and bar in, in Chicago Chinatown and uh well, while I was there, I was heavily involved in the operation and I see 
uh, labor cost is one of the biggest issue for 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 if you're running a business, a restaurant especially. And uh, a lot of my friends, they facing the similar problems, and uh, uh, they are looking for some good solutions. But most of the solution they can find uh, from the market has um, significant flaws uh, that cannot really help them, or the price is too expensive uh, because most of the you know good solutions are targeting. The national level franchise. So if you're a small business, uh, they don't have a good solution for you. So since I have a technology background, so I'm like, okay, I, I will try to solve this problem with my knowledge and my experience. So that's why I'm start doing this uh, startup. Yeah. Wow. So you developed this specifically as a solution for small business owners, and you started working on this long before COVID hit, right? Uh, not too long, 2019. So one year before COVID hit, basically. Yeah. But good timing on your part because there was probably high demand for your product once people started facing all sorts of issues with labor force and needing to be able to have more touchless um, solutions. Yeah, uh, it is a good timing uh, or not. <laughs> so <laughs> kind of, yeah. Uh, it's a, it's a good timing because restaurants start to understand uh, the digitalization technology upgrade is now a harder requirement, not something just not something that fancy to to make your restaurant fancy, basically. It's it's something you have to have to 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 find something unexpected. And uh, but the, the the bad timing is a lot of restaurants they, they had a very hard time and uh, you know technology requires th- there is a price for it and uh, m- most of the restaurants are very tight at this moment so they even though they want it they don't have the budget to upgrade it so yeah and i know working in in restaurants especially i mean you're talking about small businesses and then you're talking about restaurants and restaurants the the margins are razor thin so getting a a restaurant owner especially a, a mom and pop a single unit to shell out money for a piece of technology that they they may or may not think they need um, is tough. So what was that like trying to pitch this idea to uh, the, those small, the, the small business owner, the restaurants that are, they're often resistant to technology because they want to be there in person. They want to be the person taking the order, dealing with the customers. So yeah. that, that detachment is, is tough. Yeah, it is. Uh, it is very tough because, you know, uh, a lot of restaurants are owned by mom and pops and uh, they, they don't care about labor costs. They 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 don't they 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 work there, so they don't pay other laborers. You know, so they they are the only labor in there. I cannot replace the the owner, right? <laughs> no, no technology can replace the owner. Yeah. <laughs> so, but you know, it's uh, so there there is a there is a time frame. So before they really understand uh the the need of the technology, like you know, in the COVID. Uh, since we started working before the COVID and uh, the restaurant who installed our technology uh, can can safely operate throughout the COVID and uh, they actually make more money than the, the restaurant who don't in, uh, have a technology upgrades because all their competitors have to close during the COVID. So, um, so that's one benefit. So many restaurants, they see the benefit and uh, they, they start considering um, to you know, upgrade their technology to 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 protect themselves. Yep. Sure. Did you um, sticking a little bit with the um, creating the product itself, right? So this solution. Did you um, as you were going through because it was kind of an iterative process for you as you were creating, re- releasing as beta. Um, as I was looking at your website, I sort of saw that you show the timeline of how everything occurred with the um, pro- with the technology. Did you, um, did you self fund this or did you go out and do like, um, did you get investors or did you do crowd, like crowdfund, crowdsource funding? What did you do? Uh, so I started this businesses with friends and families money. And uh, we had uh, gradually had some uh, angel investors put some money in here. Uh, and we are ready to get a, get to the, the next round, which is probably going to be a VC round. So. Yeah, so that's basically how we how we started. Who's doing the the manufacturing of the product for you? Are you did you where did you outsource that to? Uh, we, mm, so we have a we have a 
manufacturer partner in Asia, okay. and uh, they have great products. They um, so basically before they working with us, they are like one of the leader in uh, uh, in the, we we're, we're operating system is Android. So they're they're Android OEM. That's basically what they call that. So they they are pr pretty much the leader in the Android OEM. So that's the manufacturer we're working with, and uh, they have great products. Uh, that's stable, you know, it's a kiosk. It has to be stable. Otherwise, restaurant owners will be have a have a headache. They have to spend a lot of time doing the maintenance of the product. So we have a end up very cost effective, um, this one. And uh, so that's one of the reason we're working with them. Yeah. I know that one of the one of the reasons that I'm, you know, when I was in restaurants, I was always hesitant to implement new technology is because it always seems to break down at 7.30 p.m. on a Friday night. Um, <laughs> and I'm sure you, you feel that pain as well. Yeah. Uh, so what, what kind of uh, service and support do you, do you offer um, on your end? Like how, how do you get around that? How would you alleviate my concern yeah. uh, implementing that? So basically that's, that's a great question because, you know, for restaurant technology, the expect, the expectation of restaurant technology is it has to score 99.99%. Otherwise it, 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 you won't have a market. Nobody's going to use it because it's going to break at the, at the middle of the Friday rush hour. You know, if it's 99% good, which means every hundred order, you have one it's a system error. So that's not even acceptable. So you have to go very, very good uh, beyond that. Um, but you know, for us, uh, you you cannot be like a hundred percent reliable because it's it's a it's a piece of, you know, technology involving hardware and software, and uh, there is sometimes you you have an issue with it. So how we how we how we uh, do it is we make sure all our uh, devices are remote controllable, so that uh, and uh, at the same time we have a we have a real time. A reporting system so that all our machines they are reporting to our server in real time basis, and we integrate our real time uh, reporting with a mobile app uh, on our end. So it send us notifications if something goes wrong in a certain restaurant. Say your restaurant, the the printer is stuck, so it's gonna send a message to our um, to our uh, to to the customer service people, and then they will remote control your machine and fix that problem if they could, or uh, they will be there and get ready because they know you're gonna call us because you probably gonna don't know what's going on, and then they will get ready, and then they will tell you what's going on, and then you can fix that right away very quick. So that's basically how we do it. Yeah. That's that's fantastic. Yeah. I want to make sure that we have ac adequately described or provided the detail of what this technology does. Cause I'm not sure that we covered that. So okay. we know that it's a kiosk system for restaurants, but is it, does it, you place orders on it? Is it point of sale where you're paying? Is it, does it notify the bus boy when a table needs to be bussed? Um, what does it send the orders into the, okay. the cooks in the kitchen? Like what does the technology do? What problems does it solve? It Okay, uh, so I'll do a brief introduction. So it's a self order kiosk for quick service restaurant, very similar to what you guys see in McDonald's in Taco Bell, where they already, the big touch screen. So people can, can order on the touch screen and the order will be sent to the kitchen. And how we do that is we integrate our kiosk with different POI systems. Uh, our, currently our biggest partner is uh, Square. So we integrate seamlessly with Square so our uh, order, so how, 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 how you use our product is you, you get our product, then you log in your Square account on our machine. So our machine will sync up with Square and all our orders will go to Square and Square will send those orders to the kitchen. So if you get our machine, all, the only thing you need to get is a kiosk. You don't get anything else. And the, the payment processing is, is also through Square through our partner. So we don't do the payment processing. We, 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 it's, a, it's the same processing company with the, uh, whoever you're using. It's, it's a consistent with the POS. And, uh, and what we're focusing on is uh, we make sure customer, uh, our, our, we, we have a great recommendation system. So a customer knows uh, the, the sales 
uh, inside of the owner. So we pretty much want to make sure our kiosk is a good salesperson. You know, it's it's where people order. So you want you want to make sure it it is consistent. Uh, doing the app sales is consistent. Doing the recommendation is consistent. Implement your manual. Say you have a combo, so we make sure your combo is implemented correctly. You have a promotion going on. You want to do like buy one get one free. It's uh, it's consistently implemented in the kiosk. You buy this and you get the other one free, and people get it very quickly, and then they can order it. And uh, the benefit of using the kiosk, of course, it uh, it increases your overall uh, capacity of a restaurant. Say you you used to only have one register, now you have one register and three kiosks. So you can basically take more orders in your rush hour, right? So the restaurant can make more money during the same time and uh, with less spending on the labor, which makes sense, right? You, you, if you want to have four registers, you need to have four person. But now you have one person and three kiosks. So that's basically the benefit. And also uh, customer order, when they order on the kiosk, they spend more time exploring the menu. So they in, incline to order more. So the data show the, the order, the average tickets has increased at least 15%. And after a restaurant installed a kiosk. So that's the other thing great for the restaurant to have a good uh, ROI, a return on their investment. They invest on the kiosk, they want to see some returns, right? One return is they get more orders in the rush hour. The other return is they, they get more money from the average ticket size and they save money on the labor. So that's basically uh, what it does. And then we have the AI power, which means we uh, study the behavior of the client when they order. And we, we collect their data from every single touch. And then we create a customer profile for the business owners so that they can further analyze how their customer behave. So you can have a, a proper a strategy for different tires of your customer. So your customer gonna behave differently. You know, I visit this restaurant very often. Maybe uh, Corey don't visit this restaurant or the, he visit only once, once, a, once a week. I only like six times a week, something like that. So my strategy, the customer strategy to me and to Corey will be different. So I can we can create a customer profile and then provide that to the restaurant owners. That's interesting. So you're in the one of the other benefits is it makes it um, a a better customer experience than having for customers having to wait in line to place their order because they're just they can go to the kiosk and you know a lot of people don't like talking to people so it removes that obstacle yeah. although i'm not gonna lie to you lucas i had to use some you know i had to expand my mind a little bit because i don't know the last time i was at a mcdonald's or mm -hmm. a taco bell so i didn't know that they had touchscreen ordering at either one of those oh yeah they're they're, they're I, slowly, I had no idea <laughs> slowly getting rid of uh the the <laughs> The front end, the the cashier there. Um, back to the AI though, Lucas. The the yeah. reporting and all that. Do you do you help um, the business owners interpret that data? Do you help coach them in terms of, hey, maybe this item should be above this item, or you should offer this combo because people are more likely to order these three items together. You know, stuff like that. Yeah, we. Uh, you know, the AI take time, but that's where the AI, the power of AI. So that's gonna definitely be the benefit yeah we 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 do we do coach them yeah like right now we collect the data and our ai hasn't become a full product yet you know we, we didn't implement how those data can be useful to the restaurant owners but if they ask us we can provide them some insights at this moment for sure yeah do you, yeah, can you of yeah. mm -hmm. oh, sorry can, can you easily calculate um roi for uh potential customers if they're kind of on the um uh on uh, what's the word i'm looking for <laughs> if they're if, the, if they're unsure if they're unsure if they're undecided yeah, if they sure. buy or not uh it totally depends on how busy their uh their their businesses is uh, if they say if this restaurant so the more the busier the restaurant is the more benefits they see from the kiosk basically uh or if they uh say like i have a I give you some example. Like I have a client before the, he purchased a kiosk. He's like, "Oh, my maximum uh, months I can do uh, seventy thousand, seventy thousand per month." And then he he got three kiosks. Then boom, he got ten thousand a month. So that's thirty thirty thousand increase revenue. So that's that's definitely gonna worth the money they put in on the kiosk, you know. And but some of our clients, they are like, "Oh, I wanna." Uh, save some labors. I, I got one kiosk and I, I put it there. Uh, but then as a the time being, they see customers 
uh, coming in, and the, since they are not busy, then the customer coming in, then they look for the people, and then some some of them will be like, oh, I don't think the 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 kiosk uh, helped me that much, but you know, it totally depends on each individual restaurant. So I I really don't have a like hardcore number say this is a return of uh, investment, but I I what I want to say is, um, I, I don't want to like just you know sell this idea to to just tell everybody hey you have to get a kiosk at this moment but i do want to say uh it works to try it works to try yeah yeah and our pricing is very friendly we have a leasing uh plan so if you are not sure you can lease it for like a for like a year and see if it helps if it doesn't you can return it well that's a nice option for small business owners um so we need to start wrapping up i do have one final question for you and that question is do you have any um like features or upgrades that are coming soon for people that you've built on the roadmap or are you just um moving through what's released right now to see how it works for the for your customers yeah we we consistently upgrade our uh, product and uh all our uh, um future upgrades will be uh, v- available in all our machines, so we don't we don't uh, discriminate any of the businesses regarding the software. So we'll we'll upgrade to everybody, uh, and uh, the next coming feature will be um, the loyalty program. So basically, customer can accumulate points on the kiosk when they order, and then uh, they will see their points, and then they can redeem something with their points on the kiosk. So it's like a very good, a very intuitive interaction between. Uh, the restaurant and the customer and to increase the retention of the businesses. Yeah. Well, that's nice to work in the loyalty program. That's, that's smart. Well, yeah. thank you so much for joining us. We really appreciate having you on the show today. Can you tell our listeners how they can find you? Uh, go to our website, infi.us, infi.us. Uh, that's the best way to reach us. And uh, there is a number uh, they can call and uh, we have, uh, our company is not big, so we only have a small, of uh, like options to select and one of the options is me so <laughs> <laughs> well, we can so, appreciate yeah. that yeah 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 <laughs> if you pick the right option you'll get to me <laughs> yeah, yeah we also only have a very small number of options to yeah. select from so um, <laughs> all right well thanks for joining us and we'll put that information in the show notes for our listeners and um, special thanks to our listeners for tuning in today and Thank you. Yeah. And be sure to reach out to us. You can learn everything you want to learn about us and our podcast on sbpace.com. And you can connect with us on social media. We're on LinkedIn, Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. Yep. And while you're out on the internet, go ahead and subscribe to our podcast. Subscribe and like it. And oh, hey, give us a review. Yes, and you can reach out to us about any topics you want to cover. If you want to be a guest, we've got a form out there you can fill out. You can shoot us an email, info at sbpace.com. You can reach out to us. Just let us know. And while you're on our website, be sure to click through to Amazon to buy our book, Seriously, Now What? A Small Business Guide to Disaster Preparedness. It was a number one bestseller on Amazon, and we have a digital workbook download available. Yes, and if you've already purchased and read our book, go back to Amazon and review it because like I said before, we like feedback. I'm Julie. And I'm Corey. And this was BizQuick, helping small businesses across America.